Greetings, knowledge seekers. The force is with you. So recently, a friend of mine who's a DJ asked me a question where I had a really long-winded answer, and that was, hey, I need to get a new MacBook. Which one should I get? What's an M1? And I left her a really long-winded message explaining each model, why you should get one, why you shouldn't, the things you need to know. So I decided to create a video, everything you need to know as a buying guide if you need to get a new MacBook, possibly an M1 or an M2, and you're going to be using it for DJ software. So we're going to break down the details with each MacBook model. But first, a word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Direct Music Service. Check out the description or the pinned comment below for discount codes. Now, before I go on, I just want to note that this is not a PC versus Mac debate. This is for the people who already made up their mind and they want to get onto the M1 platform. At the end of the day, Mac, PC, Linux, Android, iOS, the choice is yours. It's your preference. It's you who gets to experience what you need to do. And this video is more about what you need to know if you want to be on the Mac platform with the M1. So before we break down each model, it's really important to know a couple of few points. Every MacBook, brand new MacBook on the market today is more than capable of smoothly running Serato, Rekordbox, any DJ software. Now with the recent beta release of Serato Stems, it has been found that so far in the beta that MacBook M1 and M2, anything with Apple Silicone, does best with real-time stem rendering. In fact, the order goes, if you're not pre-rendering your stems and you're using them in real time, the bottom of the list is the Intel MacBooks. Next up is the Intel Windows computers. Next up is the Ryzen Windows computers. After that, on the top is the Apple Silicone MacBooks, which can render stems pretty quickly compared to the other ones. Serato Stems seems to be optimized for the ARM architecture. But as far as basic DJ software functions, all MacBooks, and it's been like this for a time, from the Air to the MacBook Pro are all more than capable of running DJ software. Serato, Tractor, Algorithm DJ, Virtual, Mix, PC DJ, whatever DJ software you use, all the MacBooks today can run it. And when I say that, I'm completely saying the base model ones are more than capable of running DJ software. So if you're getting a baseline MacBook of any model, it's more than enough powerful to run Serato. You don't need to upgrade the CPU. Now with RAM, eight's not gonna kill you, but more is always better. The thing that you might need to upgrade is probably the capacity of the solid state internal drive. The truth about MacBooks today is that you can't really upgrade the internal storage or the RAM after purchase. You have to do it at point of purchase or the MacBook had to be configured that way from the beginning. If you're like me who has their Serato library on an external, in fact, I have it on this SD card right here, upgrading to a big storage isn't really necessary. But if you're one of the folks who runs their music internally from the internal storage of their MacBook, you're going to need a decent size capacity solid state drive. Also, if you plan to use stems and pre-render them, you're going to need more storage for your library. Right now, I have 356 gigabytes of my library in here, and this is a 512 SD card. If I decide to pre-render stems, I'm going to need about anywhere between twice to three times that amount to have pre-rendered stems so I can use this external or SD card on a non-M1 MacBook if I want to run stems. And Serato's not the only one that has the option for pre-rendering stems. It looks like Virtual DJ is starting to do that as well. They have a public beta out for that. I still need to do more research on that, but it seems like that's the direction where it's going. Also, you don't always have to get a brand new from Apple MacBook. You can get a really good quality MacBook from Apple certified refurbished. You get a full warranty. It's QC to be like brand new. There's no scratches on them. In fact, the MacBook that I got is a certified refurb. I saved about $200 on it. It actually has the upgraded storage capacity. And that's one of the cool things about certified refurbs is that there's available upgraded MacBooks in there. Mine is an M1 MacBook Air, it's a 2020 model with 512 gigabytes of storage because I wanted it to match my previous MacBook Pro with 512. You get the full one year warranty and you also have the option to purchase Apple Care if you wanted. Now, another important thing about getting a MacBook is to know the operating system and its status with the DJ software you plan to use. Currently, at the date I'm making this video, we're at Mac OS Ventura. 
Now, the thing about Ventura is that currently it's recommended from both Rekordbox and Serato not to update to it because there's no compatible version that works well with the software yet. The updated version that works well on Ventura has not been released from both software developers. It may also be the case with other DJ software developers. This is why for you folks who already have an existing MacBook, you have to know when the right time is to update and when to hold off. Usually hold off right when a new Mac OS comes out until the DJ software you use releases the updated version that's compatible with that Mac OS. I have a whole video on when to update right here if you want to check that out. Now, what does that mean for people buying a brand new Mac? Well, if you're buying a brand new Mac today, including Apple refurb, it's going to come with the latest Mac OS and it cannot be reverted back to an earlier Mac OS, even if it's an older model MacBook. My certified refurbed MacBook from Apple came with Mac OS Monterey. That means I can't revert it back to Big Sur, even though it is an older MacBook that came out around the time of Big Sur. Because I purchased it at the time of Monterey, it can only be reverted as far back as Monterey. For you folks buying a new MacBook for DJing, yours today will come out with Ventura, which is currently not compatible with Serato and Rekordbox. It will be eventually, but it's one of the headaches of dealing with the Mac OS system. So keep that in mind when you're buying a new Mac. It's usually best to get a brand new Mac or a certified refurb around the springtime, because usually by then, DJ software developers have released the updated compatible version, but this is just the reality of dealing with Mac OS. So let's talk about each MacBook model. And the reason why we're gonna go by each MacBook model is because the power of each Mac has been established as we spoke about earlier, is powerful enough to run Serato all the way to the weakest MacBook Air. What differentiates each body style is how many ports you actually have in terms of using it with DJ software. And the price can vary drastically, and it's up to you to decide if you wanna deal with having extra accessories to make your MacBook work, or if you wanna go for the more expensive MacBook that has all the features that you need to be able to have DJ software and run an external drive, if you have an external drive or extra accessories with your DJ gear. So we're gonna go on the Apple website, go to Mac, we're gonna start with the MacBook Air. And there are two types of MacBook Airs. There is the M1 MacBook Air that starts at $1,000. And then there's the M2 chip MacBook Air that's $1,199. So I'm gonna click buy so we can list all this. So right now what I have is the $999 MacBook Air, but mine has the upgraded storage capacity that has 512 instead of the 256 that the base model has. Now, this MacBook Air will rock using Serato, will rock using Rekordbox or any DJ software. But the thing you have to know about it is that it only has two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports, which are USB Type-C. So all MacBooks today no longer have USB-A. So if you have USB-A cables, you have to get USB Type-C or you have to get a USB Type-C hub. I have this one right here that I use. And I have an extra long USB Type-C cable. The reason why I like this one is because it has a display and tells me what's going on with my connectivity. It has a little display right there. And this one gives me three USB 3.0 Type-A ports. It has an SD card slot reader, so that's where I can put my music library. I bought an extra long USB Type-C to Type-C cable, and this does power pass-through. Now, the reason why power pass-through is important is because on a MacBook, the USB Type-C ports can also be used as a charger. In some MacBooks, it's absolutely required. The 2020 MacBook Air M1 requires you to plug one of these ports to power or to pass through power by plugging it to your hub and going into your MacBook. So I could plug the power supply into the hub and with all my devices connected there and I can plug it here and it will power the MacBook. Now, the way I use this is I put my library like this and then I connect this like it's an external hard drive. I usually separate the power on its own port and then I just use this for all my data related connections. That includes connecting to your DJ controller or your mixer. Now, some people are uncomfortable with this. I've never had a disconnection during play. I've always used external drives for the duration of 
however long I've used Serato. If you take the proper precautions, it's not that big of a risk. But know that there's only two USB Type-C ports. One's going to have to go to power. And while that might seem like a limitation, in fact, it's kind of a downgrade from previous MacBooks because MacBook Airs used to have SD card slots and everything. But it's $9.99. It's relatively affordable. In fact, when it's on sale, you can get a brand new one for $800. I got mine as a certified refurb with the upgraded 512 gigabyte solid state for just a little over a thousand dollars just a little over this price i got apple car on it and it would have been a 1300 hundred dollar computer priced out brand new during the time when i purchased it so entry level price not a lot of ports if you are going to be playing from an internal library you want to upgrade this 256 solid state you might want to get a terabyte if you plan on doing pre-rendered stems now it's an m1 Pre-rendered stems is more of an option, but if you're like me who has computers that aren't an M1 and I'm still using them, pre-rendered stems is kind of important, but that's why I use an external. So off to the next one, M2. The M2 is an upgrade. Now it's a slightly bigger screen. Now the previous MacBook, the M1 was a 13.3 inch screen. This one is a 13.6 inch screen, a little bit more real estate. That means you can see a little bit more of those playlists because it stretches out just a little bit more and it's a lot clearer and sharper when you shrink the, the font size in your DJ software. So it's a little easier to see and doesn't strain your eyes. The base price is $200 more than the M1. The big thing about this is, yes, it only has two Thunderbolt USB 4 Type-C ports, but this model, has the MagSafe 3 charging port. That means you don't have to plug your power to one of your open USB ports. Now you truly have two open USB ports. You can use one for an external storage device and you can use the other one for your DJ gear. If you have multiple DJ gear, you can use a hub. But the big advantage here is the fact that this MacBook, along with this slightly larger screen real estate, is the fact that you have essentially an extra port because your power doesn't have to go through one of the USB four ports that are on there. Now the base model of this is just $200 more than the M1. Now, if you need more storage, the one with the faster GPU actually has 512 gigabytes as a base model. So either one of these two, now that one is at $1,500 and it's actually a little bit more than the one with 256. But if you can't tell, basically as we upgrade with the price, you seem to get more ports. Now I know this is silly as an Apple user because we know that some of these ports existed on older MacBooks. They took them away and now they're like slowly bringing them back. But anyways, I digress. So now let's move over to the MacBook Pro. And there are three models essentially. Well, actually basically two and one's in two sizes. There's the 13 inch MacBook Pro and there's the 14 inch and 16 inch. Let's start with the 13 inch. Now this is the cheapest of the MacBook Pros and the base model price is $12.99. It's actually in line with the MacBook Air price. This is an M2 chip and it has the touch bar on it. And as far as port wise, this is very similar to the MacBook Air. It has two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports. Strictly on USB port availability, this is actually a downgrade from the MacBook Air M2 that we just previously talked about. Now the Pro models are optimized for heavier tasks than what the Air models are made for in terms of video editing or anything that's graphically heavy at rendering, something resource heavy. But as far as using what DJ Gear is concerned, the ports are limited to two USB Type-C ports and one has to be used for power. So same rules as the MacBook Air M1. The 13 inch MacBook Pro M2 is a little hard one to swallow because the price and the port availability, mm, so let's check out the 14 inch. Now the 14 and 16 inch are basically more or less identical in terms of what's available, but starting with the ports, three Thunderbolt four ports. It's not two or two taken with power. It's three independent ports, which you can use for USB devices, which most DJ gear is. That's more USB ports than the legendary 2012 MacBook Pro that a lot of DJs seem to love and not want to let go. Now, if you DJ video, there's an HDMI port output on this specific model. Also, an SD card slot reader, which for me is great. I know not a lot of people do this, but I like to keep my library in here. 
And this one has the MagSafe 3 port so that you have an independent power port so you don't have to take up any of your Thunderbolt 4 USB Type-C ports. You can use that for your peripherals. Everything that's available on the 14 is also available on the 16. It's just a question between the two of what size display you want. Now, do you want light and portable or do you want a bigger display so you can really expand your DJ software's GUI and see your playlist and shrink the font size so that you can see so much more of your DJ software when you're using it. So choosing between the 14 and the 16 is just portability versus bigger display size. If you're doing Serato, Rekordbox, or Virtual DJ Video, it's probably best to use this one out of the MacBook M1, M2s because this one has the dedicated HDMI port. You don't have to use a hub and use the HDMI there, which is totally fine to use, but you're really, really loading on a hub if you have limited amount of ports. Now, this is a big price jump from the 13 inch MacBook Pro or the M2 MacBook Air. This starts at $1999 at $2,000. It's like a $500 leap from this, well, to this, from this model. And it's silly because a lot of these ports were available on MacBook Pros years ago. It was taken away. My MacBook Pro Intel i9 has four USB Type-C ports and one has to be used for power. This reintroduced the HDMI and the MagSafe so that you don't use up your data ports. But to get all this, it costs $500 more. If it doesn't bother you, a USB hub can cost you anywhere between $30 to $60. Now I get that having the ports are more convenient and more reliable, but it's $500 worth that convenience and that's up to you. And when we jump to the bigger display, the 14 to the 16, same specs is another $500 more. Now, like I said, it's totally up to you if you wanna go that route, but do you wanna take a $2,500 laptop to the club where there is a risk of a drink spill or anything happening when we know for a fact that a $1,000 MacBook Air is more than capable to kick ass running Serato or Rekordbox. And it could do it as low as $999 or even less if you catch a sale price. Now, I'm not discouraging you guys from getting a MacBook Pro. I think having all those ports is amazing. And as a person who likes to multitask on their MacBook, a 16 inch would be great for testing DJ software as well as doing my video editing work. But not everyone is a content creator. Now, one of the mistakes a lot of people make is they're like, I'm gonna get the most expensive computer possible because I want it to really run Serato. Now, this right here for running Serato, aside from the one terabyte solid state, this is overkill. <laughs> Unless you're using that same computer to edit video on, there really is no reason to be getting this at all. There is no performance advantage. Well, if you have a giant library and you need to analyze all those, which for the most part, you already have most of your library analyzed, you're just analyzing new songs. This more or less is not gonna matter for a Serato Rekordbox algorithm DJ user. So if you're only using it for DJ software, M1 Max is overkill. I would even say M1 Pro is overkill unless you're doing video editing or any resource intensive tasks. If you're gonna get a 16 inch Pro, this right here with whatever appropriate size solid state drive upgrade you need, or if you're good with the 512 because you use an external. In fact, it has an SD card reader, I would use an external because my external becomes internal because it's an SD card because you insert it in and it's, anyways. 16 inch, if you have eyes like mine where I'm getting older and it's harder to, harder to read things and you need them a little bigger, you need the screen real estate. But remember the 16 inch is a little heavier. 14 inch is a lot more portable. In fact, the 14 inch size is just the 13 inch with a thinner bezel so that the screen is a little larger. So I hope I didn't confuse you guys. Hope this was helpful. And if it was, please hit that subscribe button. That'll help me out. And also don't forget to click that little bell icon. If you got any questions, leave them down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. The force is with you always.